Thanks for that great introduction, Tom and Betsy. And good evening to all y'all. I am a Christian who chooses recovery over drugs and alcohol, and my name is Champ. You know, I'd like to welcome all y'all tonight, especially the newcomers, and to let you know that we have all been newcomers at some point. Recovery works if you work it, so please keep coming back. And after this hour is over, we hope to see you in the 8 p.m. Zoom meeting Betsy and Tom just spoke about a few moments ago. You may notice that I am here in my garage. Now, there is a reason for this. If you hang in, you'll see what, I'm, what that reason is. Tonight, we're going to talk about essential things. What are those essential things that are essential to our lives and, and to our recovery? And how do we keep the most essential things the most essential things? You know, we want to stay on that recovery path, not stray away. Hmm, that's kind of cool way to remember it. We want to stay and don't stray. Now, essential, it's an interesting word. We ought to think about it. What exactly is essential? I think it's a good idea for us to take a look at the definition of the word essential and find out what we're talking about here. So let's go to the experts, you know, the internet. Let's ask Siri what essential means. Hey Siri, what is the definition of essential? As an adjective, it means absolutely necessary, extremely important. Do you want to hear the next one? Yes. As an adjective, it means of a disease with no known external stimulus or cause, idiopathic. Do you want to hear the last one? Why not? You see things and you say, why? But I dream things that never were and I say, why not? Okay, Siri. Um, she's got a little bit of an attitude tonight. <laughs> Maybe she needs a little recovery herself. <sighs> but back to the word essential. According to, essential uh, according to Siri, essential can be either an adjective or a noun. Now, let me make this clear. I failed English. But they tell me that an adjective means a description of something. And a noun means the something that that adjective described. So the word essential as an adjective would be absolutely necessary, extremely important. So an example of essential as an adjective would be like, um, like essential oils. Um, essential oils would be the noun and essential would describe it. So now here, here, here's a question. Are essential oils absolutely necessary? Are they extremely important? I mean, are they truly essential? You know, what makes them essential? You can't eat them. Can't drink them. Well, some of you may disagree, but to me, and that's just me, all they are is a bunch of smelly drops you put into some machine to odorize the room to make it smell like fresh lavender or peppermint, or yang lang, you know, whatever that is, you know, to help soothe all our troubles away. So again, I ask, what is so essential about essential oils? Don't judge me. I'm just a guy standing here in my garage. Well, in any case, that's the word essential as an adjective. Essential oils. Okay, now the word essential is a noun. It's on the screen essential, a thing that is absolutely necessary. So here's where we're talking about things that are essential. In life, I'd like uh, to think we'd all agree that there are things that are essential. You know, we all want good relationships. We need to have money to live. We need food and water and clothing, things like that. These are essential. In fact, here in my garage, I'm going to show you a few things that are essential to me. You know, I was told that there was a reason I was in, in here. So let me show you this. You see here, this whiskey barrel, this is truly essential. When I first moved out of my house, this was my entertainment center. Now see, I'm a big boy and I have a real entertainment center, but this, it means the world to me. So it's going to stay in my garage for another five years, at least I'm sure. What else we got here? We have my bike. Now, I had to have this bike. It was essential 
that I bought this bike because, you know, I was going to be like Lance Armstrong. I was going to be fit. So I bought this a year and a half ago. I mean, it's still got the little knobs from where the tires are brand new. Um, what else do we got here? Now, we got my golf clubs. And I got to tell you, these things, they don't see enough of me, but they really are essential. They really, really help me get back to, uh, to planet Earth on some days. But um, to get a little more serious, nowadays, you know, we have COVID. People are considering their masks to be essential, particularly, particularly if they're in the medical field or if they're older or have conditions. You know, ventilators are essential to people. Sanitizers and testing kits, these really are essential things. Things that are truly essential matter. So here at Choose Recovery, we also have some essential things that really matter. We call them the five essentials. Things that help us to stay and don't stray in recovery. Things that are absolutely necessary for our recovery to be permanent, growing, and joy-filled. They remind us to stay and don't stray. In fact, these are really the five essentials of any recovery. But at Choose Recovery, we name them. And you just heard Tom and Betsy talk about them. Now I'm gonna shout them out and uh, you know, it's fun. Let's do it. Ready? The five essentials are Jesus, trust him, 12 steps, work them, sponsor, get one, meetings, attend them, and service, do it. You know, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. These essentials are absolutely necessary. We need each and every one of them, but they can be utilized in any order. There's no right or wrong way to twerk them. Trust me, you will not have somebody standing over the top of you saying, you must work these steps like this or they will not work. It doesn't work that way. We all have our own experience and however these essentials seem to fall into place for you, well, that's just fine. Sometimes a person will find Jesus first. They don't know about sponsorship. I have a friend who is a lifelong Christian and loves Jesus but struggles with a compulsive behavior. And he had no idea that there were others out there with his same issue. You know, I told him how in AA, I found a sponsor that had been down the same path I had traveled and that my friend could get a sponsor to help him out, just like my sponsor helped me. We don't have to do this alone. Sometimes it's meetings we begin with, but we don't know Jesus. I'm a perfect example of that. When I came into the rooms of AA, I had no concept of God or Jesus. And to be honest, I wasn't really looking for God. But in these meetings is where I heard about a loving God who wanted me to recover from my addictions. And that led me to church where I discovered Jesus loved me. He wanted to give me the power to recover and he had always been there waiting for me. So as I said, all five of these are essential, but they came as we say in the AA program, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. But all five are essential. They are things that are absolutely necessary for our recovery to be permanent, growing, and joy-filled. There's a verse in the Bible that is so important to me because it's a direction from God to stay on the path and don't stray from that path. Stay and don't stray. It's found in Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six. And it goes like this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. God tells us that the way to stay and don't stray from our recovery path is to trust in him instead of what we think we know. And he will keep us going in the right direction. In recovery, the way we trust God and not on our own ideas is called following those five essentials. Now, sometimes we may think we don't need them, but there we go again, thinking, right? When we question the wisdom of the ages, it's time to get back on track. These five essentials are how we trust in the Lord and submit to him. For instance, meetings. Around here we say, meetings, attend them. When we go to meetings, one of the essentials, we're trusting the Lord. Arlene talked about this a couple of weeks ago. If you didn't catch that lesson, go back and watch it. 
There's a saying I heard early on, um, and luckily for me, that it's stuck. And that saying goes, many meetings, many chances. Few meetings, few chances. No meetings, no chances. How we get a lot of chances is by making a lot of meetings. I need a lot of chances. Meetings are where I go to recover wisdom. Don't forget, we're all here because we're not all there. Anyone here because they're not all there? I know I am. I'm with all y'all. You know, in fact, meetings are where you, uh, you meet your human guide, your sponsor, another one of the five essentials. What we say about it is, sponsor, get one. God, maybe God, but we all need God with skin on. A sponsor can give us hope right here and right now. Hope is what recovery is all about. So if you need some hope, it's time to get a sponsor at one of the meetings you go to on Zoom so you can start getting some. You know, we trust in the Lord with all our hearts when we trust in the sponsor that he gives us. You know, let me tell you this funny story about how I met my sponsor. So, you know, I've been going to this meeting and there was a lot of old people. I mean, a lot of old people. Um, you know, and I'm just sitting in there. It's like, man, what? Uh, these guys don't have anything I want. They don't have anything I need, you know? What are we going to have in common? Will they, will they even understand where I'm coming from? You know, so the meeting was about to start and this guy shows up, you know, a few minutes late and he was wearing scrubs. Yes, he's a doctor. He can fix me. You know, so I'm already thinking, uh, you know, so he shares at the meeting uh, and that night and, uh, and honestly, I like what he had to share. He was cool, calm, collected, something I definitely wasn't. We know I'm cool though, right? Okay. But seriously, this guy had something about him. I was intrigued. You know, this guy seemed to have peace, joy, happiness. I knew right then I wanted what he had. And after the meeting, I summoned up the courage to ask him to be my sponsor. And today I know that following this essential of sponsorship helped to secure the recovery I enjoy today. And I still use my sponsor daily. You know, working the 12 steps are another way we trust in the Lord. You remember what we said about the 12 steps, right? Work them. You know, last I looked, uh, last I looked, God isn't going to do a giant download into my brain, giving me every change I need in my life and every bit of knowledge and maturity I need to stay sober all in one giant package. He gives me the 12 steps to work with my sponsor. They show me the right way to live. They are a pathway to recovery. This is the way that we, in all our ways, submit to him. Like it says in the scripture that we read earlier, and the promise at the end of the scripture, if you remember, is, and he will make our path straight. Here's our chance for a better path, and how we get there is through working the 12 steps. The steps are never done. I started on my steps when I first got sober and I will never be finished with them. I also ask God to please allow me to be of maximum service to my brothers and sisters in recovery, any way that he wants me to be. That's the next of the five essentials that I began to engage in, service. And you know what we say around here about service, do it. Sure, it's a little more challenging these days, but God never said it was going to be easy, but he did promise Jesus would be with us wherever we go. The essentials are all essential to our recovery because how else are we going to be a bunch of mixed nuts like us? How are we going to be able to get closer to God? Keep an eye on ourselves, grow in God's grace, and help others in the, bar in the bargain. Think about it. Hmm. And speaking of God's grace, the last of the five essentials is my recovery walk with Jesus. What do we say about Jesus? Trust him. I know for me in the beginning, trusting Jesus was difficult. I had walked away from the church and more importantly, I'd walked away from Jesus. I dove deep into my addiction and to be honest, I wasn't willing to trust anyone. My life had spun completely out of control and I had no idea on what to do. One day when I had finally had enough, 
I cried out to the God who I did not believe in to please help me. You know what? That was on February 10th, 2017. I just recently gave God thanks for three years free from my addiction to drugs and alcohol, when before I couldn't put together three days. I know I'm not alone in struggling I had uh, with my addiction. How many of you have so wished that you could overcome the addiction or compulsion that keeps you in bondage? I'll bet it's all of you, because all y'all are just like me. I know. We know that it's like to, we know what it's like to struggle with the effects of addiction and the craziness that it brings in our lives. We may feel despair and wonder if there really is any way out of the insanity of our current circumstances. And maybe escape from our predicaments is is impossible, but when we trust in God, even the impossible can happen. You see, I trusted God that day and my life began to change. Friends, this can work for you too. See, me, I got Jesus last, but it was Jesus calling me to the other four essentials to him. The other four were how I learned to trust him. Jesus is calling you too. And he's here. And here's the crazy thing. Even if you don't come to him, he'll never leave you. Even if you don't believe in him, he believes in you. He's with you even when you're fighting him. So why fight him? Go along, go along with his path for you. Jesus is really the most important essential because he's the one who can do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And all he is trying to do is to get us to do is to let him do these things. Never forget Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Remember how it goes? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. You know, I like this Bible verse. I need a straight path today. Recovery is that straight path and Jesus gives it to me through the five essentials. Meetings, sponsor, 12 steps, service, and Jesus. You know, maybe it's time for you to consider submitting to Jesus today. If you need a straight path to happy, joyous, and free recovery, you know there is one. It's called the five essentials that Jesus is asking you to submit to him by using all five. That's the way the Lord has provided for us to stay and don't stray. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for these amazing, amazing essentials that you have placed before us so that when we work these five essentials, our recovery can grow. It can be happy, joyous, and free. And Lord, thank you for allowing us to use them in any, any order that we see fit, Lord. As long, as long as we do these five things, we can have recovery. So Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you for this technology for allowing us to reach our friends that we can't see in person. God, thank you. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, it's been a pleasure and an honor to share my recovery journey with all y'all. Let's travel Jesus' straight path together. Remember, stay, don't stray. I am with you in the journey. See you later, folks. Love you.